Imagine this, you have an eight hour work shift from five to six work hours in position and the remaining time is regulatory and mandatory breaks to avoid fatigue and errors caused by it. You have about 30 to 40 aircraft on your responsibility in one hour. With an average of 35 per hour multiplied by 5.5 hours working time, you have 192 flights during one day. Modern commercial jets have an average of 200 persons per flight. So during one day, you're responsible for the lives of 38,400 people. Any mistakes or errors can have serious consequences, putting you under immense pressure and stress. You're subject to strict regulations and protocols that must always be followed. So the question is, do you have what it takes to be an air traffic controller? We've seen air traffic controller towers every time we pass an airport. How much do you know about what goes on behind the scenes and the people working on these towers? How do air traffic control systems work and what are they designed for? Today we'll explain the mysterious towers in the sky and the people inside them. What does an air traffic controller do. The role of an air traffic controller or ATC is quite complex. This person works from the control tower or radar facility providing air traffic control service to the airlines. The objectives of the air traffic services are number one, prevent collisions between the aircraft. Number two, prevent collisions between aircraft on the ground and all the vehicles and other obstacles. Number three, expedite and maintain an orderly flow of air traffic. Number four, provide advice and information to the pilots. Number five, request help from other relevant organizations in case of emergency. The main goal is obvious. Ensure the safety of aircraft, pilots, cabin crew, and of course, airline passengers. The air traffic controller will communicate with the pilots throughout the flight, issuing instructions. Controllers use multiple information systems, radars, visual references, and of course radios to make sure the traffic remains safe and expeditious. Depending on the stage of flight and the class of airspace, the controller will order mandatory instructions and offer information such as weather forecasts forecast that the pilots can use for the planning. The pilot is the ultimate authority in operating the aircraft and may deviate from ATC instructions to maintain flight safety in an emergency. The flight is controlled by tower control, approach control, and area control. A tower controller will handle the flight from the engine start until the aircraft takes off from the runway of departing airport. Immediately after the departure, an approach radar controller will issue altitude clearances and direction instructions called headings for the flight to exit the airport airspace towards their cruising altitude. The longest stage of the flight is the cruise, which can last up to 16 hours depending on the flight. During the cruise stage, an area radar controller will make sure that the aircraft maintains 600 miles per hour speed at the certain altitude level and its path is always clear. Approaching the destination airport, the flight is transferred again to an approach radar controller who will issue altitude clearances and headings toward the airport runway. Before landing, the pilots will communicate with the tower controller who is responsible for the use of the runway. The controller will make sure that the runway way is clear of other aircraft and vehicles before issuing a landing clearance to the aircraft. Are you enjoying the video so far? Please give us your support by hitting that like button and subscribe button. How air traffic control is maintained. Aircraft are displayed on the screen of a computer system on which a target tracking software is installed. Information comes to it after processing the data received using the radar. It sends signals to an aircraft equipped with a particular transponder and short pulses. The transponder on the plane receives this signal and sends it back with information about the location, altitude and airspeed. Each defendant is assigned a code before departure which allows you to separate one aircraft from another. Next, the system compares the plan code with the one received from the aircraft and displays all the necessary data on the controller screen along with his call sign. All modern aircraft already have their own systems installed that allow flight crews to avoid collision with other aircraft in the event of a significant reduction in the minimum separation between them. This system is called TCAS, Traffic Collision Avoidance System. It's only used in case of emergency and relying purely on the system wouldn't make flying predictable or efficient. Each controller is responsible for a space limited in height and distance. For example, the approach radar controller's responsibility usually starts at around 2,000 feet or 600 meters above the ground level until the aircraft reaches the area radar controller's area of responsibility. ATC gets all information regarding the flight with a flight plan which includes information about the departure airport, destination, planned route, requested altitude, departure time, flight time, and aircraft type. All that information is added to the radar's tracking system. The system combines the transponder signals with the flight plans. Controllers use this combined information when controlling the flights to their requested routes, altitudes, and destinations. It's essential for the controllers to know the type of aircraft they're controlling because aircraft performance varies a lot. Cruise speed, approach speed, rates of climb, descent, and turns are completely different between a heavy cargo aircraft and a small business jet. Information about the type of aircraft and its occupants 
occupancy can be found in the flight plan. Here's how, for example, the selection of a runway direction takes place. The wind determines the procedure for using the runway. It's much easier and safer for the aircraft to take off and land in the wind from an aerodynamic point of view since the headwind helps reduce the distance of the takeoff run and the distance slowing down after landing. The tower controller's responsibility is to make sure that only one landing or departure aircraft is using the runway. At major airports with at least two runways, one is usually used for takeoff and the other for landing. It helps speed up the traffic flow, reduce delays, and maximize the number of flights during peak traffic hours. There are many situations and weather conditions that can affect flying dramatically. For example, a significant deterioration in visibility requires special procedures. And needless to say that controllers rely both on pilot reports and the radar systems. There's absolutely no room for a system error or any malfunction. Why is ATC the most stressful job? If you still doubt whether ATC is the most stressful job, here are the five reasons to prove it. Safety critical work environment. Air traffic control is a high pressure job that involves making quick and accurate decisions to ensure the safety of hundreds of passengers in the air. The work environment can be fast paced and unpredictable, which can be mentally and emotionally taxing. Pressure from schedules and being punctual. The safety of aircraft and passengers is paramount in air traffic control. That's not enough. There's a high to stay within the schedules and avoid delays as much as possible. Every minute in the aircraft is delayed costs thousands of dollars and may have a huge knock on effect on the airline and its next flights. Long working hours and working in shifts day and night. Air traffic controllers work in shifts of up to 12 hours long. The job requires a high level of mental focus and concentration, which can be challenging to sustain over extended periods, especially during nighttime. Most of us aren't performing at our best from 3 to 4 a.m., but in ATC, the time of the day is irrelevant. The same safety critical requirements are essential at any time of the day. Complex and technical nature of the job. Air traffic control is a complex and technical job that requires controllers to be proficient in using advanced equipment, software updates, and procedure changes. The job also involves coordinating with other air traffic controllers where it's critical that the message is conveyed correctly and misunderstandings don't happen. High levels of accountability. Air traffic controllers are responsible for the safety of thousands of passengers each day. Just imagine ATC during a single working shift is responsible for more human lives than a doctor during their entire career. Do you have what it takes to be an air traffic controller? Share your opinion in the comment section below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe so you can enjoy the excellent content we send your way.